I tell ya, these TVs. <laughs> so the gym I go to just in there, I've just come from there. They, they've got the TVs running all the time and they've, they've basically got it on the free to air channels. The channel seven and channel nine are the big ones here. And, and they're just cesspits. It's just social engineering. It's just full of social progression. And the stuff I see, like my TV at home doesn't even work. I haven't even got free to air TV and I know it's the Lord. I know it's the Lord just taking it away from me. And actually, the um, the manager of the place came up to me the other day, and he says, "Mate, he said, is your TV working?" And I went, "No, nah, no." He says, oh, "Why didn't you say anything?" I said, "I just, I just don't care. I don't, I don't want it, you know." But anyway, um, in there just now, I, I, the the stuff I saw. So I saw there's this show called the oh, it's V. It's got a big V. The Voice. The Voice. It's called, and it's just an upside down pyramid. But I find it really, really interesting because the pyramid sim um, symbolizes, this is where I'm being led at the moment. I'm sure it symbolizes a lot of things, but it symbolizes the, the great work, the synthesis, the truth, the anti-truth and the big gray area, the great the, the great work, the, the Hegelian dialectic that they've got us in now, that they want us in, hence, They've got a transgender contestant, haven't they? And they're all celebrating it. And boy, George, have you seen boy George lately? Oh, my goodness gracious me. I need to hide behind this book. Ah, check out boy George. I'll put up, hopefully I can put something on the screen while I edit this video. Dear, oh, dear, oh, dearie me. Oh, just the stuff you see in there. And it's so nice. I used to get so upset. I used to get so upset by it, but not now. I've just, some of the comments I've been getting... Now, I'm going to get to that in a, at the end of this video, but just some of the comments I've been getting on, on this channel, just just uh, like such such encouragement. The, the the channel's changed. The whole dynamic of the channel's changed, and I'm just so I feel blessed. I really do. I really really feel blessed. It's it's just it's 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 just brilliant. It's what I wanted of the channel. The channel started. It just started as it's just a diary, really, just because my kids don't talk to me and. They're estranged and they're under the spell of their mother. And I just thought, I thought to myself, you know, if I found out, you know, in years to come that that my dad was making a YouTube diary at 45, I'd, I'd clamor to go and have a look at it, you know. And that's how it started because I just hope in years to come they might see it. But it's just moved from there. It's just moved from there now. It's now just this diary of my walk with the Lord, and I've just got 108 brothers and sisters with me. Oh, yes. But some of the comments I've been getting, it's really encouraging. It's really, really encouraging. I hope it doesn't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to contradict myself at the end of this video with what I'm going to say, because they are two different things. But the, the words of encouragement, just, just the things like, um, you just don't need to worry anymore. You know, you've got Jesus and it's just so, so true. And, and just to see that it's just, it's great, but we must, must, must be vigilant. We must keep exposing the enemy. I'll get to that at the end of this video. I wanted to share just a, just a, just an experience I've had this morning over a period of time. It's a funny old thing. No, 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 not, not, not anymore. Nothing's a funny old thing anymore. It's the Lord. So I, I've read the New Testament, I think three, maybe four times. I read it. I've read it once since Christmas Day and I read it, I think, years ago I may have read it. I don't know whether I did it in its entirety, probably not. But I did it when I was first saved because I was told by the guy who led me to the well, the guy from Brisbane, he said, open the New Testament first. And that's the advice I give to anybody who's been saved who wants to read the Bible. I would give that advice to to start there. And then I, 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 I did that I did that before Christmas Day twice, I think. Yeah, twice I did that. And then Christmas Day was the day where I went, right, right, I'm gonna I'm now I'm gonna open the, the Old Testament and this book, this book's never gonna be closed ever, ever again. And today and I'll get to this, we're here. And David David, I haven't forgotten you. I will get to that in a sec. That's what this story is about, really, about your about your comment and your your request of me. Um, but but that day it was it was never to be closed. Hence, and, and uh, there was this camping trip. Now this is the same camping trip I spoke about the other day when I opened the book to Nehemiah, and it all changed. That same camping trip, I opened the book to Job, and Job one uh, verse one chapter six just leapt off the page. Of me, because remember, I believe your calling 
is your personality, your passions. That's what starts your calling. That's the trigger. And then you've got to let the Lord lead you. And you get led by the Holy Ghost. And then he will lead you in directions. Just like now with me, right? So I read the Old, I read the Old Testament the first time when I was at camping there. And I, I finished it. I finished the Old Testament around late February, I think I finished it. And then I read the New Testament again. And I finished that about a month ago. And then I was going to go to Enoch. From there, I was going to go to Enoch, but, but, but no, the Holy Spirit's led me back to the start. So I've started again at Genesis, and now today, about a month later, I find myself in the book of Job. And that's how the Holy Ghost leads you, because the things that I was passionate about, the things that, that, that he, he created me passionate about, the things that my strengths, the things that interest me most in the Bible, that, 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 that was in Genesis and Exodus and, 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 and uh, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy and, 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 and all those books. And the nourishment I've got out of them, and the second time I've read it, it's just been, oh my goodness gracious me, this book, it just changes every day. And it does, because the more light you let in of the Lord, you know, the, 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 the more wisdom you gain and the more this stuff makes sense, like chariots. Chariots of, of the host, the host, host of the armies of heaven and chariots are what they use to fight their wars in the heavenly realms, in the spiritual realms. And then I read, I think it's First Kings 6. Oh, oh, the nourishment in there. But anyway, I'm getting off topic, which I tend to do from time to time. So it, it, it all it all sort of changed on this trip to Chris, uh, a, a camping, but I, I, it's really left off the page of me, and I'll read it now. Job 1.6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, none that feareth God and ensureth evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. Put, but put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, but he will curse thee to my face, to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. So David, that's your short answer, mate. And the reason why I haven't done the video so far is because I keep getting just these revelations from the Lord, which is a story I'm trying to tell now, but I'm not getting to. I'm not doing a good job of it. It's just what happens with my walk, guys. All these other things are just happening and they're just coming in all the time. And I just get oh, all over the place. That's why I haven't put the video together, David, because honestly, I could talk about that, that question you've asked for hours and I've just got to put it all together. But but this is who Satan is. Satan is a minion. He's just a minion of the Lord. He's just a vessel. He's just someone the Lord uses for his works. And that's what's happening in the earth. He's using Satan because this is a big courtroom. We're all here for a second chance. Yes, I believe Adam and Eve, the Garden of Eden, it was a parable for us all. Yes. I believe we all sinned somewhere, some in a time previous past, and that's why we're here, and why we have the elect, why we've been singled out, why we've been blessed, why we're so lucky. I mean, I don't know. You draw on the stories, don't you? You draw on Abraham, you draw on Job and Noah, and you draw on all these people who were used by the Lord, and I, I suppose you just try and find answers there. But in any case... This morning, I, I, so my Instagram, right? So I've still got Instagram. Have a look at it if you like. I'd like it if you could. Um, it's the same Nick as here. Now, the Lord has blessed me in terms that I can write okay. I'm a pretty good, I'm a pretty good writer. Always have been. But now I use that ability to basically glorify the Lord. Now, each year for the past three years, I've done my Christmas message. They're up here on my channel. The links are up here on, on my, on my channel. Um, the first one's just, I look back at it now and it's just, it's just a real, like a diary from where I was at the time. And, and then you had the second one, red spoils in the, in the moonlight. And then last year I had left behind and each year with that Christmas message, it's just, it's just led me to grow in Christ. And Instagram, it's the only, it's the only social media I've got left. If you call YouTube social media, I suppose I've still got that too, but 
But it's the only it's the only social media that I've that I've got left is Instagram, and I've only got about forty six people with me, and I never get likes, I never get comments, I never get contributions. Why? It's because everybody that's on there is of the world. There's no one born again on there, and nobody nobody wants to know. I'm surprised I've got any of them left. But anyway, I received a comment this morning. I woke up and there was a comment and a friend request on there. I thought, oh, this is interesting. I haven't had a comment in, in ages on my Instagram. But anyway, it was just it was just somebody who I hold dear. He's, this person's important to me, very important to me. And they just, they just encouraged me just to see the light in the world. Now, it's my testimony. It's my testimony that if, if somebody has told me that they're either worried about me or I need to do something. It's basically them just telling me I'm wrong. And that, that, that's what this was. So I knew it straight away. But that, that the friend request was from them as well. So they'd seen something I'd written. They'd unfriended me and then they friended me again. Now, when I say I encourage you to go and look at my Instagram, which I do, please do and, 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 and join it. It'd be great because we can fellowship there as well. But when you do, or if you do, uh, please, can you respect my, just respect me and respect this other person too, and just not, don't comment to his comment, don't interact with anybody that's existing there at the moment, just, just, just don't, because as I say, this person, this person is important to me, and I, I just don't want to defy their trust, you know, and this is, this, this diary, and I, I like to be open and honest here, and I am open and honest here, but... But please just do me the courtesy and do him the courtesy as well and just not don't don't respond to their comment because it's not as things aren't as obvious sometimes as they seem. Anyway, when I'm driving in there this morning, I'm, I'm praying, and that's the first thing I said to the Lord this morning. I said, Well, that was interesting, Lord. I, I got that comment about about that this is you this is you. I know this is you talking to me through this person because they're basically they're trying to lure me back into the dark and they're trying to encourage me that I'm wrong. And then as I'm praying, I'm praying through and then I thought of Job because that's what Job is, isn't it? That's my recollection of Job is that all of these people, Job was a man of the Lord and all these people just kept coming forward to him. They just kept coming forward to him and just kept saying that he's wrong and there'd been some incident and he was wrong and he has to do this, that and the other. And Job was unrepentant in the eyes of the Lord, as we all are, as we all should be. And he was glorifying the Lord and all these people. And that's what this story was. That's what Satan did. That's when the Lord told him to do it to Job. And I just, I just hit me. I was just down here. I was just about ready to turn off the car. And it just, it hit me like a ton of bricks. And all the while, brother David, at the same time, you're asking me to do this video about who Satan is and to explain Joshua 1.9. And that's why I haven't put the video up, brother, because these bolts just keep coming from the Lord. It just It's just never, ever ending at the moment. So I'm just going to have to get home and just get a framework, I think, of the things I want to talk about. And just stick, just stick to that framework and and try not because I, I could literally I did the video twice yesterday and both times it went for an hour and I'd left things out and I thought uh, but I've learnt from those videos so I'll do it I'll do it today properly and I'll still hope to get it up tonight we'll see how we go but I haven't forgotten your brother but I mean how good's the Lord like how how good is the Lord so I, 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 David you, you you've asked me this question and since you asked me this question. All of these bombs are just coming in. And I just remember straight away when I saw that question, it was as I woke up, I checked, I, I, I was checking my, my, my notifications. And I saw it and I thought straight away, I thought, oh, here's the Lord again. Here's the Lord now talking through David, which he's done a few times, by the way, brother. Here's the Lord talking through David because that's now led me on this journey to, to, to learn. And oh, the stuff that's coming in. The stuff that's coming in, and then as I'm opening the book to Job, Job 1 6, it all talks about Satan and who he is and how the Lord uses him. This comment comes through that that, that invites me to hearken back to the world, which is what Job's all about, and it's just, and the Lord testing you, and it's just. Oh boy, oh boy, I just really feel like shouting it from the rooftops at the moment. It's absolutely wonderful. I wanted to just make something clear as well. So I've had a new, a lot of new subscribers come on. And as I say at the start of this video, I'm very, very grateful for that. But it is my testimony that I came 
to be where I am today, to be in the house of the Lord, to be a part of the remnant of Israel. I, I, I'm being led here because of the ills of the world. I was led in. The Lord said to me in September 2016, when I learned the moon landing was a hoax, he said, come on into the tent. That's what I know now, but I didn't know it then. Now, from there, I had a torturous, torturous, torturous couple of years. It was June 2018 before I put my hand up to be saved. So I was in that place, just in that wilderness where I knew everything about the world. Well, not half of it since I found the Lord, but I knew all this stuff. And I'm like, what is this? What is going on? And my life just spiraled out of control. I kept getting fired from jobs. Um, and I wasn't getting fired from jobs because I was speaking the truth. It's just the world was just spitting me out, you know. I'd say little things from time to time, but it wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't, you know, running around telling the people, people the earth was flat or that, or that Israel did 9-11 or the Holocaust was, I wasn't doing anything like that, you know. It was nothing like that. It's just the world spat me out. It was the Lord calling me in. The Lord saying, Brett, mate, come on in. And it just took me a while to hearken. But two years, and they were painful, painful, painful years that were very, very real for me that I really look back on now with a great deal of, I don't know, mixed emotions, to be honest. Mixed emotions, because the end of it is now I'm here and I'm, I'm in the house of the Lord. But at the time, whoa. You know, just a lifetime of being rejected by society and being told I'm wrong. And then all of a sudden, just to have this, just, just have this steroid injection happen with that, and my life just spiral out of control, you know. So the only reason I've come to the Lord is through there. Like, if I wouldn't have come to the Lord if I didn't know about the evils of the world. So I just want to put this out there that if it's your calling that you don't have to know about the darkness of the world and you believe the darkness of the world is not something to be spoken about and to make other people aware about, great. That's your calling. Fantastic. I can't relate to it. I can't relate to it on any level whatsoever because it's my calling that I was led here by that and also the nourishment I'm getting for each time I'm led astray by those false voices like the Lodge of Wisconsin. So every time they lead me astray, I then reflect and I go, ah. So I remember one day Ryan, he was frantic to talk to me about the, about the Ark of the Covenant. He was frantic to lead me astray about that. And now the Ark of the Covenant is something that's really, really important to me. It's really come alive because the Lord of hosts sits on the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant that sits between the two cherubims. And two cherub and there was cherubims that were that were guarding the the Garden of Eden after after Adam and Eve were, were kicked out, and then there was Noah's Ark, and there's just that word Ark it translate the same translate the same as the coffin that Joseph's bones were in, and there's a big deal about Joseph's bones. So I look back now and I think, oh, thank you, the House of Wisconsin. You know, you've given me all that. You've given me this. You've helped help the Lord provide me with this wisdom. But each time, so many times, the Lodge of Wisconsin come to me and they said, Brett, don't worry about the evils of the world. Don't worry about the dark kingdom. Just concentrate on the kingdom of the Lord. It's rubbish and I'm not interested in it. So if you want to talk to me about it, go for it. You can say whatever you like on my channel, any comment you want. There is no censorship here. There is no filter, whatever you like, because whatever you say, it's just a reflection on who you are and your walk within the Lord. So you go for it. You, you go for it. But for me, it's not going to stand because I, I'm not interested in it because I know it's rubbish because we are put here. It's just like those scriptures in Job. We need to understand Satan and we need to understand the darkness because if we, for every part of the darkness we understand, that allows us to see the light of the kingdom. And as I read through the Bible, I see them. Like, if I hadn't been able to Google these things, and don't get me wrong, I don't Google my thoughts, I Google what the world says about these things. It's two different things. So when I read about the Moabites, right, I, I, don't, I don't go to Google and go, who are the Moabites? Who are the Ammonites? No, I go to Google to say what they think of them. But to get the answer to who they are, I know I've read Genesis 19, and I know they come from Lot's daughters defiling him, and they were, as a result, that story, the Lord allowed Satan to come into those two girls because Lot pitched his tent 
towards Sodom. And it says it, I think, in Genesis 15 or 13, around there. It says that. So that that was the Lord punishing. That was the Lord punishing Lot. And that's that was the iniquity of his sins were born, the Ammonites and the Moabites. And that's why they worshipped them. And this is what the Lord does. The Lord comes into your temple, comes into your temple. And for each each time you reject him, he puts the he he leaves that part that part of that iniquity he leaves and he brings in that evil part which is Satan which is the Moabites the Ammonites the Rephaim the Philistines and all of those evil evil people that that dwell in the world they come and dwell in your land which is your temple so without that understanding of the darkness I'm not going to get anywhere near the truth so. If you, do, if you are going to make comments like that, and I'm not talking to anyone in general, it's just a because I've got a whole heap of new subscribers come on board, and I just, just, just want to make this clear because I've been led down the Masonic pit time and time and time again, and when I see certain language and when I see certain things, I just think straight away of the Lodger of Wisconsin, but I'm not accusing anybody of being from the Lodger of Wisconsin at this point, all, all as I say at the start of this video, I hope I'm not contradicting myself because I'm not. I hope it doesn't sound like I'm contradicting myself because I'm not. Because the words of encouragement I've been getting are great, but people aren't telling me just to concentrate on Jesus, just to concentrate on the kingdom. And that's how I'd like it to stay. But if you want to do that, you go for it because this channel, there is no censorship and there is no filter. It is a place for you can see with the comments that I've put up previously that people have just called me all sorts of names and I don't take them down because it's not a reflection on me. It's a reflection on them and their walk with the Lord in this dark, dark world. All right, my brothers and sisters, as usual, you let me know. One last thing I wanted to, to, to leave on today, I was, I've been thinking about do what they are wilt and just how ridiculous it is. And I left a comment on a call for an uprising this morning. It's so stupid. This is It just shows their hypocrisy. It just shows how stupid the whole thing is. It's like I look around here and there's sign after sign after sign and there's things on the road and there's little green men on the on the pole to say you can cross the street and there's policemen out there who are hiding from you to make sure that you don't go too fast to keep you nice and safe. But all the time you have to do what they all will. But, oh, it's for your own safety. Oh, yes, yes, yes. But the only people who can keep us safe are the Freemasons, and the only way they can keep us safe is through what, what is through fines, signs, and more, more rules. It's stupid, and they do what they will. It's, it's utterly preposterous. But the kingdom of the Lord, it makes perfect sense. Not some days. Some days it doesn't. Some days you've got to read the text and go, what, Jasher 36? I, I, I could go on all day, Jasher 36, and... Those creatures and the time loop again. I'm going to do separate videos on all this. And then there was Joshua 24, 3, of which nobody is commenting on. Does anybody have any thoughts as to what that means? That he took Abraham from the other side of the flood. Where's the other side? And it's right through the book of Joshua. They go to the other side of the Jordan. Oh, I love it. With every question answered, more questions abound. The jigsaw gradually gets put, put together, but as it gradually gets put together, the size of the jigsaw gets bigger and bigger. It's a wonderful time to be alive in the body of Christ, my brothers and sisters. And all power and all glory goes to Jesus Christ, our Saviour, the King. To mind, the sun has come. You've been left